Today we're going to look at two nice sums that were presented in the American Mathematical Monthly, and this was from 1997. So let's first recall this really special function called the sine integral function, which we'll denote by si of x. And it'll be the integral from 0 to x of sine of t over t dt. Okay, and then what we'll show is that the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of this sine integral evaluated at n pi over n all squared is pi squared over 2. And then we'll show that this sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of minus 1 to the n plus 1 times this sine integral evaluated at n pi over n cubed is pi cubed over 18. And here we'll use Parseval's identity, which we proved in a previous video. You might say, well, how are f and f hat and g and g hat connected to each other? Well, let's maybe recall that right now. So f hat of n is equal to 2 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi of f of t times the cosine of n t dt. And then similarly, g hat of n is defined to be, well, essentially the same thing where f and g are swapped. Okay, so let's dive into this first identity. And really the trick for each of these is to pick a, you know, special function for f and for g so that, well, this identity essentially just gives you the answer. Okay, so for the first one, we'll set f of x equal to g of x equal to minus pi over 2 times the natural log of x. And, well, given this, let's see what parts we need to develop. Well, we need to develop f hat of n, g hat of n, well, those are the same thing, and f hat and g hat of 0. Let's maybe look at f hat and g hat of 0 first. So f hat of 0, which is going to be equal to g hat of 0, will be equal to, let's see, it'll be 2 over pi times, well, f times cosine of 0t, but cosine of 0t is 1. Oh, but let's notice this 2 over pi and this pi over 2 cancel, leaving us with a minus sign. So we'll have minus the integral from 0 to pi of the natural log of x dx, or I guess I'm using t's here, so that'll be the natural log of t dt. But now, how do we take that integral? Well, we're going to do it with integration by parts. So let's maybe set u equal to the natural log of t, and then we'll set dv equal to dt. This is a standard setup for integration by parts when you're integrating an inverse function. So that gives us du is dt over t, and then v is equal to t. Okay, so let's see what this does to the integral in question. So I'll take this minus sign in front of the whole thing. So let's see, we'll have v times u, or u times v, so that'll be t times the natural log of t. We need to evaluate that from 0 to pi, and then it'll be minus the integral of v du. Oh, but let's observe that the t and the numerator and the denominator cancel. So that simply gives us the integral from 0 up to pi of dt because of that cancellation. But observe that this lower bound of integration is actually an indeterminate form of type 0 times infinity here. Well, we can evaluate that pretty easily using L'Hopital's rule, and it turns out to be zero, so we won't worry about that. So that's going to give us a minus sign, only the top term here, which is pi times natural log of pi minus pi, as that's clearly the value of the second integral. So now putting all this together, we'll have pi times one minus natural log of pi. Okay. So let's just recall what we've done. We have found the values of f hat of 0 and g hat of 0. Okay, so now let's look at the values of f hat and g hat of n. So let's see, f hat of n, which is the same thing as g hat of n, 
will be equal to negative the integral from zero to pi, where here, again, I'm gonna cancel the minus pi over two and the two over pi down to a minus one. And then we'll have the natural log of t times the cosine of nt dt. And now, again, we're gonna do a step of integration by parts. So let's take u to be natural log of t here. So let's see, that means that du is dt over t, and then we'll take v to be equal to cos nt, or dv is cos nt dt, I should say. And then that makes v equal to one over n times the sine of nt, just by doing the antiderivative. Okay, so now putting that into the integration by parts formula, we've got a minus sign in front of the whole thing again, and then we'll have u times v, so that'll be the natural log of t times the sine of nt all over n evaluated from zero up to pi. Now, note, if we plug in pi, we get natural log of pi times sine of n pi, but sine of n pi is zero. If we evaluate that at zero, we get another infinity times zero indeterminate form. But again, a quick use of L'Hopital's rule will show that that is zero meaning that this whole term is zero. Then we'll have minus the integral of v du. So that'll be one over n times our integral from zero to pi of, let's see, we'll have sine of nt over t dt. But now observe that this minus sign can come in, it'll cancel the minus sign that we have. And now let's look at what we've got over there. We've got something that looks fairly similar to our sine integral, but not exactly the same. Notice the argument of sine here is n times t, whereas the argument of sine here is simply t. That being said, you can do a fairly simple substitution, which I'll leave as a homework exercise to bring these two things together. And that'll leave us with si of n pi over n. So maybe we'll take that equality, like I said, as a homework exercise. Okay, so let's see where this takes us. So here's what we derived on the last board with our choice of f of x and g of x to be minus pi over two times natural log of x. Now let's plug this whole setup into Parseval's identity and see what we have. So on the left-hand side, we'll have the sum as n goes from one to infinity of f hat n times g hat n, but those are the same here, so that's simply going to give us our sine integral function evaluated at n pi over n all squared. But that's kind of the goal left-hand side of our proposed identity. So now that needs to be equal to 2 over pi times the integral from 0 to pi of f of t times g of t. But let's see, f of t times g of t, well, that'll simply be this function right here squared. In other words, pi squared over four times the natural log of x squared, or I guess I'm using the natural log of t squared dt. And then I'm gonna have minus one half this f hat, g hat, both evaluated at zero. So that's gonna give me pi squared times Let's see, one minus two times the natural log of pi plus the natural log of pi quantity squared, just by squaring that term out. Okay, nice. But now let's see how we can evaluate this middle integral. And you might say, well, we could just do integration by parts like we did before, and we could, but here we're gonna do a substitution first. So let's set t and set it equal to e to the x. But that means that dt is equal to e to the x dx. And then the bounds of integration will also change accordingly, but we'll change those on the fly. So that's gonna leave us with pi over two. Observe that the two over pi and the pi squared over four cancel. And then we'll have the integral of, now observe that this natural log of t will simply be x so we have x squared times e to the x dx, which is kind of a nicer integral. Now let's see what happens to the bounds of integration. So when t is equal to zero, x will be equal to minus infinity. And then when t is equal to 
pi, x will be equal to the natural log of pi. And then multiplying this stuff out, we'll have minus pi squared over two, and then plus pi squared times the natural log of pi, and then minus pi squared over two times the natural log of pi quantity squared. Okay, so now how could we work with this resulting integral that we have right here? Well, we could use the DI method of integration by parts or so-called tabular integration. So let's see, that means in my leftmost column, I'm going to put the polynomial type term. And in the rightmost, I'm going to put the exponential term. I'll take derivatives down the left column until I hit zero. I'll take antiderivatives down the right-hand column. And then I'm going to match on the diagonals. So there I'm going to match those two, those two, those two, and then alternate my signs. And that gives me a quick way of write, writing down the antiderivative. So here I'll have pi over 2 times, so I've got my x squared times e to the x, minus 2x times e to the x, and then plus 2 times e to the x. I'm evaluating that from minus infinity up to the natural log of pi. And then I'm going to have minus well, all of that stuff where I just bring that down. Now from here, it's simply a case of doing a little bit of arithmetic, which I'll skip. So after doing all that arithmetic and seeing the dust clear, what we'll end up with is pi squared over two, which was the goal over here. Okay, so let's maybe get a setup for this second identity, and then I'll leave it as a homework exercise to finish it off on your own. So we just finished this first identity, now let's point towards the second. So let's take f of x to be the same thing that we had before. So minus pi over 2 times the natural log of x. Recall that that means that f hat of 0 was equal to pi times 1 minus the natural log of pi, whereas f hat of n was equal to the sine integral evaluated at n pi over n. Okay, so that's one part of maybe the tools that are necessary for this second sum. Now let's choose a value of g of x, and we'll take g of x in this case to be 1 over 12 times the quantity 3x squared minus pi squared. Okay, nice. So now let's calculate g hat of zero. So g hat of zero, well that's gonna be two over pi. Well two over pi times one over 12, that's gonna be one over six times pi. And then we'll have the integral from zero up to pi of, well it's gonna be g of t times cosine of zero, but cosine of zero is one. So we're gonna have three times t squared minus pi squared dt. So we have 1 over 6 times pi. Now let's take some antiderivatives. The antiderivative of 3t squared is t cubed. Antiderivative of minus pi squared will be minus pi squared times t. We'll evaluate that from 0 to pi. Oh, but check it out. If we plug in pi here, we'll get pi cubed. Plug in pi here, we'll get pi cubed. So that simply gives us zero. So g hat of zero is zero, and that means when we apply Parseval's identity, that stuff cancels. Now let's look at g hat of n. So we've got g hat of n will be one over six pi times the integral from zero up to pi of our three t squared minus pi squared times the cosine of n times t dt. And again, now we can do tabular integration pretty similarly to what we did in the last case. It's just like a little bit bigger of a problem. So let's see. We'll put polynomials down the left column. So we've got 3t squared minus pi squared. And then here we'll have cos n t. So taking derivatives, what will we have? We'll have 6t. We'll have 6 and then we'll have 0. Taking antiderivatives, we'll have 1 over n times sine of nt. 
And then for the next one, we'll have minus 1 over n squared times cos nt. And then we'll have minus 1 over n cubed times sine of nt. Now let's match on the diagonals just as we did before. And then we'll alternate the signs. And let's see, that's going to leave us with 1 over 6 times pi times. So we'll have 3t squared minus pi squared over n times sine of nt. So that'll be our first thing. And then we'll have a plus the 2 minus signs cancel 6 over n squared times cos nt. And then finally, minus 6 over n cubed times sine of nt. And then we'll need to evaluate that from 0 up to pi. Now, let's observe if we plug 0 and pi into this first term or this third term, we get 0. Just because sine evaluated at integral values of pi is 0. So this is going to simply cancel out. So this gives us 0, and this also gives us 0. Okay, well, oh, and I just realized this should have been a 6t. If I plug in t equals 0 there, I simply get 0. But then we'll get cosine of n times pi. But cosine of n times pi is, in fact, minus 1 to the n. That's because cosine of even times pi is 1, and cosine of odd times pi is negative 1 by the 2 pi periodicity of cosine. So this leaves us with 1 over 6 times pi times minus 1 to the n times pi over n squared. But then moving some things around, I forgot a 6 here, we'll have minus 1 to the n over n squared. And then maybe I'll stop it right there because there are only a few short steps left, which perhaps you could dig into to come up with our final value over here. And that's a good place to stop.